Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is actually a continuation of the anatomy quick recap in embryology. Uh, so please do see the previous session so that you will get a continuity. And uh, all these topics I've done in detail in my channel. So this is just a quick recap. I won't be taking much of your time to explain each and everything. This is just a quick recap. So uh, if you're seeing it for the first time, I would uh, like you all to see the detailed version first and then say this, then only you will get an idea. So today's topic is new relation. So new relation happens in the fourth week, we know. So the main events of the fourth week are uh, the differentiation of the three germ layers, the epiblast, hypoblast, intramembranic mesoderm. So we have already the three germ layers, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm formed in the end, by the end of third week. Now, you all these three uh, germ layers are going to get differentiated to form different parts of the body. So again, in the fourth week, we have the formation of somites, formation of folds of the embryo, and development of face and limb buds by the uh, second month of intrauterine period. So when we talk about the in differentiation of intraembryonic mesoderm, again, I have done a detailed session. If you take a section here, uh, we can see that this this entire layer is the intraembryonic mesoderm. So this intraembryonic this is the ectoderm and this is the endoderm. So this intraembryonic mesoderm is getting differentiated as uh, the medialmost uh, mesoderm. You call it as paraaxial paraaxial mesoderm, just lying on either side of the notochord. This is the notochord. So paraxial mesoderm, then you have the intermediate mesoderm, and then you have the lateral blade mesoderm. So these are the three different forms of intraembryonic mesoderm. Now the lateral blade mesoderm at the extremity, you can see that it is getting divided into or differentiated into the somatopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm and splanchnopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm. When we discussed about the extraembryonic mesoderm, uh, we mentioned about a cavity which is developing in the extraembryonic mesoderm that was known as extraembryonic coelom. So when the extraembryonic coelom is formed there, you had the somatopleuric and splanchnopleuric extraembryonic mesoderm. Likewise, in the intraembryonic mesoderm, you have the formation of a cavity that is known as intraembryonic coelom that differentiates the mesoderm, the lateral plate mesoderm into somatopleuric and splanchnopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm. Now, uh, let's see what are the derivatives of the paraxial mesoderm. The main derivative is you have the somites, uh, which are made up of three segments, dermatome, myotome and sclerotome. Dermatome gives rise to epidermis, myotome gives rise to the skeletal muscle, trunk and limbs and the scleroderm gives rise to the axial skeleton. Coming to the intermediate mesoderm, it is giving rise to the urogenitor system and coming to the, uh, the lateral plate mesoderm, you have the somatopleuric mesoderm giving rise to the subcutaneous tissue and appendicular skeleton and the splanchnopleuric mesoderm giving rise to the smooth muscle of the gut. So why I'm uh, specifying about the derivatives, the reason is most of the MCQs, uh, especially for the PG entrance, uh, you will have uh, all these uh, options. So you have to know which is not and which is there. So uh, with respect to the somite, we have a pre-somite period, somite period and post-somite period. Pre-somite period begins from 15th day to the 20th day. Somite period, the formation of somites, you have from 20 to 30th day and post-somite period is usually considered as after the 30th day. Now, when you talk about the somites, it's formed during the fourth week and we have up to 44 pairs of somites. Even uh, recent studies have mentioned more than that uh, by the end of one month, first month. So, uh, now let's see what are the derivatives of ectoderm. So, you have the surface ectoderm and neurectoderm. From the surface ectoderm, you have the epidermis, the protective layers, the hair, the nail, inner ear, external ear, enamel of teeth, lens of the eye, anterior pituitary, especially the Rathke's pouch, parotid gland, and anal canal below the pitinate line. Again, all these things, uh, you should have an idea just to pick the correct answer from the MCQs. Now, coming to the neurectoderm, we know neuro, as the word implies, it is mainly related with nervous system. So, you have the neural tube, the central nervous system, retina and the optic nerve, pineal gland, neurohypophysis, astrocytes, oligodendrocytes. So, here the neurohypophysis is from the neurectoderm, whereas the anterior pituitary is from the surface ectoderm. That difference you should know. And in eye, the lens of the eye is from surface ectoderm and the retina and optic nerve from neurectoderm. 
So such differences, if you could make out, it will be easy for you uh, to remember things. Now coming to the new rectoderm, uh, we have the notochord here. And above that, you have a portion of the ectoderm, which you call it as new rectoderm. So after the formation of the notochord, it induces the formation of the neural tube. So that process is known as neurulation. So first what happens is, as the notochord induces the development of neural tube, first we have a neural groove with neural folds and later this will get detached from the ectoderm to form a neural tube. So fusion first occurs in the cervical region, then it goes cranially and caudally. So at the point of the fold, you have a group of cells which was uh, first incorporated into the neural tube, but later as it gets folded into the neural tube, it will get separated and lie as a separate mass. They are known as the neural crystals. Again, I mentioned all these things in detailed sessions. Please see it. So at the anterior end and posterior end, you have the two openings for the neural tube till it gets closed completely. So at the anterior end, you call it as anterior neuropore. It is usually closed at 20 somite period or middle of the fourth week. And at the posterior end or the caudal end, you have the posterior neuropore, which is closed at 25 somite period or by the end of fourth week. This period also you have to remember. So uh, the cranial end gives rise to the brain and the caudal end of the neural tube forms the spinal cord. Now the neural crest ectoderm, neurectoderm, uh, the uh, neural crest ectoderm gives rise to the following structures. This also you have to remember. The adrenal medulla, almost all the ganglia, the sensory ganglia, which are pseudo-unipolar neurons, autonomic ganglia, the postganglionic neurons. Then you have the pigment cells, Schwann cells, and then meninges, the pia and arachnoid matter. Then the pharyngeal ash cartilage, odontoblast, parafollicular C cells, endocardial cushions. So all these are derived from neural crest ectoderm. Which are the derivatives of mesoderm? Mesoderm, you have mainly the muscle. So it can be the smooth muscle, it can be the cardiac muscle, the skeletal muscle. Then you have the connective tissue, almost all serous membranes, bone and cartilage, blood, uh, lymphatics of the lymphatics and the cardiovascular system, adrenal cortex, gonads and internal reproductive organs, spleen, kidney and ureter, most of the organs with the smooth muscle, dura matter. Uh, then notochord, especially the nucleus pulposus region. So all these are derivatives of the mesoderm. Now coming to the endoderm, it is mainly lining the GIT, respiratory tract, genitourinary system. Then the pharyngeal pouches, auditory tube, middle ear, then tonsil, then parathyroid, thymus, then the liver parenchyma, pancreas, submandibular and sublingual, parotid is ectodermal and follicle of thyroid gland. So all these things, you please have an idea so that you won't go wrong with the options. Now we have the vitello-intestinal duct, which connects the yolk sac with the gut during the time of folding. And later what happens is once all the contents of the yolk sac has been used up, this will just get degenerated. And you know the yolk sac is considered as a point where you get the primordial germ cells and early blood cells and blood vessels formed. Now, let's move on to the questions, which is true about the given clinical condition. First, you have to identify the clinical condition. So, it is anencephaly. So, the, uh, the, it is, there is failure of closure of the anterior neuropore. Brain fails to develop. It is diagnosed prenatally and it can be terminated. It is said that 400 micrograms of folic acid daily, three months before conception and throughout pregnancy, if given, it will prevent this condition. So coming to the neural tube defects, we know anencephaly is the most common thing and it is due to the failure of the closure of the neuro, neuro, anterior neuropore. And uh, what, as a result, you know, there won't be development of brain. If it is diagnosed prenatally, we can terminate it. And uh, this was one of the last options of the MCQ. That is 400 microgram of folic acid daily, three months before conception and throughout pregnancy may prevent neural tube defects. Now, can you identify this clinical condition? This is an open defect seen at the lumbosacral region. This is known as spina bifida. So talking about spina bifida, it is due to failure of closure of the neural tube anyway from the cervical region to caudal region and usually it is seen in the caudal region. 
lumbar sacral region being the most common region. There are mainly three types. Spina bifida occulta. That means it is hidden. Here vertebra won't be com uh, completely closed but spinal cord won't protrude out. That is the reason why it is hidden. You won't be able to see it. Now, the, the uh, but uh, how will you identify this condition, spina bifida occulta? There will be a dimple over the skin with a tuft of hair in it. That is how you identify. If you identify the back of the person, uh, if that person is suffering from spina bifida occulta in the lumbar sacral region, you can see a dimple, uh, a bit like a uh, depression with a tuft of hair. That is how you identify this clinical condition. And it is not usually associated with increased alpha feta protein level. So even if you check the alpha feta protein level, you cannot identify this clinical condition. Now meningocele, the next variety. Here the meninges herniate between the defect uh, in the vertebra and the nervous system but still remain intact. Meninges is just a covering of the nervous system. So uh, only the meninges protrudes through the defect in the vertebra but the nervous system will remain intact. And it is said to be the least common variety. The next third variety is myelomeningocele. Here, as the term implies, myelo means the nerve, the meningo means the meninges. So both of it will protrude out. So it's said to be the, having most severe complications because the spinal cord along with the meninges protrude through the defect in the vertebra. And uh, again, some, some more uh, most severe form is myeloschisis. Uh, here what happens is the nervous tissue is exposed without an overlying membrane. You won't get the, even the meninges. The nervous tissue, tissue is directly lying outside. That is myelochrysis. Now, this is just an exercise. Rearrange the structures as derivatives of surface ectoderm and neurectoderm. We have already mentioned the derivatives. You pl please have a uh, rush through those uh, derivatives and then try to answer this. So I would say all these are the retinal optic nerve, pineal gland, neurohypophysis, astrocytes, oligodendrocytes are all derivatives of neurectoderm, whereas anterior pituitary and parotid gland, they are derivatives of surface ectoderm. If you try to uh, do exercises like this, then it will be easy for you. you. You can easily pick the derivatives. All are derivatives of paraxial mesoderm except preotic somites, somitomias, gonads, postotic somites, it is gonads. It is from the intermediate. Then somite period is 20 to 30 days. Kidney develops from, it is exclusively from the intermediate mesoderm. Suprarenal cortex is derived from mesoderm. That is again a very important point because medulla is having a different origin we have already discussed. Then primary inducer of neurulation is notochord. Once the notochord is formed, it will induce uh, the ectoderm to form the neurectoderm and after that neurulation happens. All are derivatives of neural crest cells except adrenal medulla, odendroblast, C cells of thyroid, erector pili. It is the erector pili. So that's all about neurulation in a nutshell. This is actually a nutshell because I haven't gone into the detailed explanation because I have already done a detailed explanation in another session. This is if you have to just have a quick recap with the help of some, some of the MCQs. So please leave your comment and please share it with your friends. Thanks for watching.